Welcome to the Shulamite Podcast, an extension of Shulamite Ministries and Shulamite.com, with weekly interviews and teaching with author and speaker Martha Kilpatrick and hosted by John Enslow. This weekly podcast is a way to stay connected to the ministry. So come experience anointed messages, not giving just another method, but a living impartation. Well, I mean, you know, the amazing thing is that he doesn't rub her nose in it. Oh, isn't that grace? He's not, he's not about shaming her and rubbing her nose in it. All of us, whores and gomers, mm-hmm. all of us. Mm-hmm. And um, unfortunately, and fortunately, and you do tell why it's fortunate, none of us are, I mean, that, that is who he chose. <laughs> that, is, that is his choice. You know, he chose a Gomer bride because that's all of fallen humanity. We are Gomer. That is who we are. But he looked at us and chose us. And he didn't choose the 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 uh, pure white and 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 beautiful. But he was going to make her that. That's exactly what I was about to say. They gave her fine white linen. He made her into that. Mm-hmm. So, see, she, he will get the glory for even that. Exactly. He has, he has nothing but nothings. Nothings. And it doesn't, it, he wants it that way so that all the glory can be of him. And all that she is, he will cause her to be for what he wants her to be. Yeah. And it's, when you get in the scriptures, it's undeniable. I can't wait to write about Esther. I can't wait for you to write about Esther. <laughs> please, Jesus, please. <laughs> oh, that's... Thank you, John. That is amazingly... So that bears witness with your... Oh, it's just so encouraging. And I thank... I'm so thankful for... It's strange. The other day I was thinking, why do you need so much encouragement in a project like this that, we, that you too are on? Encouragement is like a lifeline. Mm-hmm. To give you another infusion, <laughs> intravenous feeding to keep going. Right. And, uh, and it is. Well, everybody who's, who's uh, birthing has a birthing coach. Uh, oh. You know? And we all need that because in the middle of it, it feels like death. Mm-hmm. It feels like you can't do it. You, number one, you can't do it. And, and you can't. Right. A lot of it is waiting. That's and the praying. death. Yes. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. And I've watched enough uh, uh, movies and and documentaries about women having babies, and there's a point that the women, you know, unless they're knocked out, the women say, "I can't do this. Mm-hmm. I cannot do this." Mm-hmm. And um, and then the doctor says, "Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. Let's go." <laughs> and that's kind of where we're at right now. Mm-hmm. It's already written. It's already written. Well, and during these months where I've not been able to do much, everybody has said, but Martha, you're, you're living the bride that you will tell. And it's true. Yeah, that's right. I have had to live out every bit of it to have anything to know or say. Jesus, Jesus. So, please, 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 please pray. Please, I'm begging you to pray. And uh, I'm obviously, I'm standing and praying. And um, I, I've... I'm excited. Well, now I'm going to turn on John. <laughs> because he is... He's doing an incredible thing because he's giving out page after page of insight on life and Christ and current, it's current and relevant and this this one I he wrote I, I wept over it's called behind resistance to authority every generation witnesses some degree of civil unrest it seems to be the ebb and flow of humanity an earthly authority can be a huge finger poke from God's sovereign reign but in light of the uprisings I've witnessed I would like to share with you how I personally sought the Lord for answers My heart was heavy and saddened by the riots in our land. Lawlessness is rampant from the top down. Quite frankly, we have become a nation filled with lawless ones, one nation under lawlessness. Oh, 
was. What a way to put it. One of the nights when there was an uprising, I had a disturbing dream. The dream was about aggressive, intimidating men filled with strife and violence. I saw it stemmed from watching news clips, but I just couldn't shake it. At one point during my dream, I walked into a room packed with men. Actually, they were thugs who were ready to erupt. The clothes they wore were for urban warfare, and they were seething for a fight. The next morning I turned to God to still my heart and settle my fears. He led me to Romans 13, which speaks of respecting authority, because all authority comes from God. Casting off the restraints of authority, the truth behind the anarchy of the world. In our hearts we have cast off the restraints of God. So now we're unable to submit to the human authorities he places over us. You're tracing the cause now. That's awesome. Lawlessness runs rampant because in the secret of each of our hearts we resist God. These flash bombs, looting, broken windows, spray painting, burning towns are not from resistance to man. They are from resistance to God. I'm talking about lawlessness as a whole here, not as a single event or even one particular country. This is not about one person or even multiple people being abused by authority. I'm speaking of the primal rebellion that set this scenario of human rebellion up in the first place. Consequences result when we cast off the restraints of our God, rejecting His rule over us. So I ask, just whose authority are we trying to shake off in our resistance? Luke 19, 14 in the Living Bible. But some of his people hated him and sent him their declaration of independence, stating they had rebelled and would not acknowledge him as their king. The king was called not a king. Jesus. I have no ability to submit to God-given authority when I resent and resist God's actual authority in my life. Mm. In this heart condition, rebellion, godlessness, anarchy, and unrest thrive. We are witnessing neither bad cops gone rogue nor rebellious youth in an uprising. We are seeing the result of man casting off his restraints. This is what it looks like when we are working to be free from God's rule. This is the direct result of telling God to shut up. Oh, my. Luke 19, 14, this is the home and this is the one I'm used to. We don't want this man to rule over us. We're watching rocks thrown at God, cars in buildings set on fire to spite God, and the murderous abuse of God-given power on the part of human authorities. If there is no authority that is in place but by God's direction, then God is to blame. Our fight is with God. We want authority and sovereignty to be about man and not God. I can fight, spit at, and revile a man, but God, my rocks cannot reach him. The reality is our world is burning from our resistance to God as God. We have clothed ourselves in the garb of war against God. It is his rule we are fighting against in our hearts. The entire climate of our world is the result of man being mad as hell that God is actually God. We're infuriated that he has the audacity to reign in our lives. We're witnessing daily the fruit of a culture that has been so blessed by God that now we feel we do not need Him. Nor do we want His meddling influence in our lives and choices. Romans thirteen fourteen in the New Living. Instead, clothe yourselves with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Authority is a vital subject we each must face with honesty and clarity. Here's another of his blogs about authority. It's called Cursing Delegated Authority. Consequently, the one who resists authority is resisting what God has set in place. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. That is Romans 13, 2. We've talked about it so many times, John. Reviling authority is no joking matter. If you look in the Old Testament, cursing authority results in leprosy, plagues, the earth swallowing one who curses, and other means of death, to name a few. In the New Testament, blindness, degradation, and dropping dead result from cursing authority. Ooh, if that doesn't put the fear of God in, why, do, why are we not concerned about this? I don't, we don't because, read the Word. Well, well, that and it's not preached. It's not being preached. That's We don't hear it. We don't hear it, really. When humans curse authority, is a win-win for Satan. Why? 
because either the devil wins by hindering God's delegated authority or he wins when revilers of authority reap destruction in their lives. We humans cannot curse authority and avoid reaping disastrous consequences. Cursing and reviling take the offense so much further than mere murmuring. To complain about authority is bad enough, but literally to speak curses against those to whom God has delegated authority is to unleash a whirlwind of destruction back on our own lives. And this, this doesn't even mention murdering cops yeah, and, and such things. Yeah. Oh. But it's all del about delegated authority, and it's about the result. And the result is, you know, you can look at these these scenarios out there that's going on right now, and then you realize if you, you know, you can just get mad and just say, God, you know, level them. But th these are individual souls that are literally sowing into their lives seed that is going to be, Oh my it's goodness, gonna reap. it is going to be really bad. It's, and it's inevitable. It sure enough is. The devil achieves his goal of devouring, stealing, killing, and destroying God's beloved humans when we curse authority. And he's got these references, 1 Peter 5, 8, John 10, 10. Satan loves to involve God's own creation in bringing about an implosion. And reviling authority is a debacle of destruction. Everyone loses except the devil. <sighs> Exodus twenty two twenty eight. You must not revile God, nor curse the ruler of your people. In his book Spiritual Authority, Watchman Nee writes: Whenever there is rebellion and reviling among us, we shall lose the presence of God. Right. Whoa. He also says no one can reject God's delegated authority with one hand and receive God in the other hand. This is frightening because it means the progress of a man's spiritual life is halted when reviling is present. Again, Satan wins. You know what, John? Your book on sovereignty. This is a chapter from your book on the sovereignty. These are the two, yeah, two chapters you're pulling from here. And in order to understand the judgment that comes on reviling, you have to know that God is sovereign and He is in charge. Right. And if there is a um, authority that's abusing. We can, we can cry out for that, but we can't take matters in our own hands. Mm. We hope you've enjoyed the Shulamite podcast. For all the latest from Shulamite Ministries, please visit us at shulamite.com, where you'll find Martha's daily devotions, posts from getalongwithgod.com, and the online library of all of Martha's writings. At shulamite.com, downloading the free Shulamite app is easy, and livingchristianbooks.com is only a click away. Thank you for joining us on this journey to discover a God worth knowing.